everybody. Welcome to Create with Miss Carrie. I am excited to do some apple art with you today. And the reason why I chose apples is because the month of September is a great time to go apple picking. So I love to go on a nice, beautiful fall day and pick a bunch of apples and we make all sorts of fun desserts and snacks with them. And then I get to do some apple art. So a lot of times I like to draw apples, eat apples, and I even paint and stamp with apples sometimes. So today we're going to have a little apple fun and read one of my fun stories that I've chosen about apples called 10 Apples Up on Top. And then we will do a little bit of apple drawing with some crayons today. So let's get ready for 10 Apples Up on Top by Dr. Seuss. One apple up on top, two apples up on top. Look you, I can do it too. Look, see, I can do three, 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 I see, I see. You can do three, but I can do more. You have three, but I have four. Look, see now, I can hop with four apples up on top. And I can hop up on a tree with four apples up on me. Look here, you two. See here, you two. I can get five on top, can you? I am so good, I will not stop. Five, now six, now seven on top. Seven apples up on top. I am so good, they will not drop. Five, six, seven. Fun, 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 seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But see, we are as good as you. Look, now we have seven, two. And now see here, eight, eight on top, eight apples up, not one will drop. Eight, eight, and we can skate. Look now, we can skate with eight but I can do nine and hop and drink. You cannot do this, I think. We can, we can, we can do it too. See here, we are as good as you. We all are very good, I think, with nine. We all can hop and drink. Nine is very good, but then, come on, and we can make it 10. Look. 10 apples up on top. We are not going to let them drop. Look out, look out, I see a mop. I will make those apples fall. Get out, get out, you one and all. Come on, come on, come down this hall. We must not let our apples fall. Out of our way, we cannot stop. We cannot let our apples drop. This is not good. What will we do? They want to get our apples too. They will get them if we let them come. We cannot let them get them. Look out, the mop, the mop, the mop. You cannot stop our apple fun. Our apples will not drop, not one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We have to make those apples fall. They must not get our apples down. Come on, come on, get out of town. Apples, apples up on top. All of this must stop, stop, stop. Now all of our fun is going to stop. Our apples all are going to drop. Kaboom, look at that. Look, 10 apples on us all. What fun. We will not let them fall. Now everybody's joining in the apple fun. Even those crazy birds. Look at that. The end. For our 
lesson today, we're just gonna use some easy crayons. So the colors that I'm going to use for our Apple project are brown, yellow, green, red, and orange. We're gonna start by practicing doing a little drawing and then we'll work a little bit on coloring. So grab your brown crayon and let's talk a little bit about drawing circles. Now you may say, Miss Carrie, I know how to draw a circle. What are you talking about? But drawing circles sometimes can be a little tricky because it can be wobbly. Nobody wants a wobbly circle. We want a nice, smooth, round circle. So let me show you a trick. When a lot of times when kids come to my art classes, they try to control their pencil or their crayon with their hands. They might try to draw a circle by moving their fingers around. Well, when you move your fingers around, you don't have a lot of control. It can be really wobbly. If you try to move your wrist around, you might do a little bit better, but it still doesn't give you a lot of movement so that you can control your shape. So when I'm having my students practice drawing a circle, I tell them to scoot their hand across the paper like it's ice skating. And so really all the movement that your hand is making is coming all the way from your elbow. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my brown crayon down and I'm going to ice skate a circle around and around and around. Now, when I draw a circle, I go around a couple of times. So that way, if it's not perfect the first time I do it, I can do it two or three more times and get the exact shape I want. You do the same thing when you draw an oval except this time you go long instead of perfectly in a circle. So drawing a perfect circle takes some practice, but practice will always make you better. So never feel like you can't take a piece of paper and just do some practice drawings because that's gonna make you better and better and better until you get that perfect circle. So give that a try and see if that helps you improve. Now, the reason why we're talking about circles is because we have an apple to draw. And even though an apple is a little bit wobbly, it pretty much is a circle shape. So we're gonna use the circle as our outline for our apple. Let me flip this over so we can practice our apple drawing together. All right, so we're gonna start with our perfect circle right in the middle of our page. Go around and around until you get a circle that you like. And I think it's okay to have those extra lines there. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. Once you have your perfect circle, we need to show that this apple has a little divot in it where the stem comes out. So I'm going to do a little bump, a little line that goes right across the top part of the apple. And that's gonna be that little rounded area where our stem sticks out of. So let's draw a stem now. Where your stem can be long or short, but I'm gonna do one that just curves up. It's got a little tiny oval at the end and then it curves back down, back down into that little area right there. All right, so we've got our outline. I can make it a little darker now that I have my shape. I've got my stem coming out, and now we're ready to add some color. So for this apple, we could say, well, that's a red apple, Miss Carrie. Well, it is and it isn't. So we need to use our artist eyes to look at this apple. So let's look, it does have red. So I've got a red crayon. Do you see a little bit of orange? Because what happens? We've got, we certainly have yellow, but when the yellow and the red come together, you see that orange? There's a little orange in that apple. So we need a little orange. And surprisingly, if you look very carefully, there's even a little bit of green in that apple. The stem has green. There's green down in the middle where the stem comes out of. And sometimes you'll see a little bit of green on the outside of a red apple. 
So we're gonna have a little bit of green there too. So we're using our artist eye to make our apple look even more real by adding more colors. You could draw your apple entirely red and that would be okay. But if you want to make your apple more interesting, let's add more colors to it. So we're gonna start with the lightest color on our apple. And I would say, I bet you can guess, the lightest color is probably the yellow. So let's take our yellow crayon and let's look at this apple. I'm gonna hold it still so we can look at it together. We've got a lot of yellow on the front side of our apple, so I'm going to color this in. I'm using up and down coloring strokes because can you see the stripes that are on our apple? We wanna make sure that our coloring goes in the same direction as those stripes. So I'm gonna start by really coloring a lot of the front of this apple yellow. And I'm following the shape of our circle here. So do you see how when I get to the outside edge, my lines start curving too? And they get straighter when I go across the front. And when I go around to the other side, they start curving back up again. All right, so that's a good amount of yellow that I put on there. Let's switch to orange, because that would be the next darkest color, I think. And we're going to leave some yellow spots. But then we're going to start blending in some orange. Let's see if we can kind of make it a smooth blending, a smooth transition. That means it's gonna change from one color to the next. And we're gonna see if we can make it look like they all are just softly blended together. All right, so there's a lot of orange right around this area and right around this area. So that's really where I'm putting most of my orange on my apple. A little bit around the edges. Let's see. Now watch this. Can you see on the back side of the apple, there are some stripes that go down towards the stem. Look at that, that's a cool observation. So if we point our coloring lines down towards the center of that stem, it's gonna make our apple start looking 3D. It's gonna make it look like you could pick it right up off this page and eat it. So I'm going to make all of my lines start at the stem and go outwards and all of a sudden our apple is going to start looking like it's really round. See how it's starting to change a little bit? Okay, I think we have a good amount of orange. Let's jump to our red. Mm, you know, I think I, I want to do red last. Let's jump to our green. We know that our stem has a little bit of green on it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of green and we're gonna go back and kind of make that softer with brown in just a little bit. But there's even a little green sticking right out of the middle. So I'm gonna put just a teeny tiny bit of green stretching out from like that little belly button shape that's down there where the stem pops out. We'll go ahead and do that. Now we can pick up our red. And the red is really going to make it look like an apple because this could be all different types of fruit right now, couldn't it? We're gonna start right at this little line that we created for where our stem's gonna come down. And we're gonna do some lines. See how they start where the stem is and they pull downwards. They kind of all go in like an umbrella shape. And then I'm going to go from the outside edge in towards my stem. So see the top of it is starting to look good. Let's work on the bottom edge. I'm gonna to go to the very bottom 
and I'm going to start doing some lines that curve up. Almost like an umbrella that's sitting upside down. So it goes up and then it goes off to the side. Okay, now we can keep adding some more color. So on the outside edges, our apple is pretty bright red. So I'm gonna press down a little bit harder and make my color lines a little bit more red. So the harder you press, the darker that red color will be. And remember, Every time I draw, my lines are going in the same shape of the apple. If I just did straight up and down, I don't think my apple would look quite as round. What's making my apple look round are the lines that I'm drawing. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our brown. We need to make the stem not so green. So even though it's got some green on it, I'm going to color on top of it with brown. I'll make it a little bit darker. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow underneath. So on the very bottom edge of my apple, I'm going to put a little bit of brown down there because the bottom of the apple doesn't get as much light as the top of the apple. So it's gonna be dark under there. So we're gonna add a little bit of a shadow color to where there might be some darkness. And my last step is I'm just gonna go back and see if I can add a little bit of yellow to that part where the stem sticks out. Brighten that area up just a little bit. And I'm making sure that I don't see any white spots shining and I don't want any naked white paper shining through that paper that apple i want it to be fully colored okay i think we have a perfectly delicious apple thank you for joining me today i'll see you next week take care